Now, I know what some of you are probably going to say. This film isn't technically political. I say it talks about Nazis, so it counts. I am definitely not at all using that as an excuse to talk about this movie. No, no, no. It's also my show. I can do whatever I want. Now that we're on the same page, let's just get right onto the subject. The boy in the striped pajamas sucks. Like, it is atrociously bad. And this isn't me hyping it up so I can do like that angry critic persona. Or me jumping on a popular trend. I've legitimately hated this movie ever since I first had to watch it in 10th grade. You know, back in the age where people were like, Oh my goodness, this movie's so tragic, so sad. I remember getting told stories by my older sister like, Dude, when you watch this movie, you're gonna like legitimately cry. And I walked out of that class completely dry faced and also just mad because this movie, as I said previously, is just atrociously bad. I'm not even gonna put a spoiler warning because I do not want any of you to watch this movie. If you've already watched it, you know what I'm talking about. Or you legitimately like this movie and you would probably want to hear an alternate perspective. But first, get into the recap and, you know, backstory behind all this. The film is based on a book of the same name, written by John Boyne, and released by Miramax in 2008, and takes place during World War II. A German boy named Bruno, played by Asa Butterfield, is forced to move to occupied Poland after his dad Ralph, played by David Thwilis, is put in charge of a nearby concentration camp. While there, Bruno meets two concentration camp prisoners, an elderly man named Pavel, played by David Heyman, and a boy his age named Schmuel, played by Jack Scanlon, the latter of which he forms a very close relationship with. Despite his father, and of course the German Third Reich, pushing Nazi propaganda onto him and his sister Gretel. Bruno's mother, played by Vera Farmiga, begins to argue a lot with her husband due to many elements of the war, them having to live so close to a concentration camp, transferring a friend of theirs to the Eastern Front because his father was a deserter, and accepting a wreath by Hitler for his mom's funeral, even though his mother was anti-Nazi, saying that the war has changed him to the point where she can no longer live with him during the war, saying that this is no place for children, so she will take them to live with her parents until the war is over. However, while those two are arguing, Bruno has actually went into the concentration camp with Schmuel to help look for his lost father. And it just so happens that right when Bruno enters the camp, it just so happens to be shower time. Bruno is then shoved into the gas chamber and literally dies. The end. Before I get into any of the criticisms, I need to make one thing perfectly clear. None of the actors in this movie are at fault, especially not Asa or Jack. They work well with what they are given. It just so happens that this time they are given an ahistorical piece of garbage and are told to make it gold. First, we're going to start off with my personal gripes, and then we'll sort of transition into more poignant critiques made by people who are like 10 times smarter than me. I know the very thought of that is elusive to you all, but I assure you, that can't be true sometimes. Bruno is supposed to be the protagonist, right? And, you know, in stories, usually the protagonist is someone that you, um, like? Yeah, Bruno is incredibly unlikable. Now, I know what you're gonna say. He's just a kid, man, calm down. First of all, I saw this movie when I was a kid, so... Point invalid. Second of all, the film is about the Holocaust, man. It's specifically set in this time period to elicit strong emotions, but you're gonna get mad that the emotions that it elicits isn't the ones that you think I'm supposed to feel. But also, I'm not just saying, like, oh, Bruno is kind of, it's not like he's like a mean, bratty kid. That's not the problem. The problem stems from one part of the movie that is just like, Especially, again, given the situation that the film is supposed to take place in, very much just turns Bruno into this incredibly unlikable person. During the midpoint of the movie, you know, Bruno's just casually walking around the house when he notices Schmuel, his friend that he loves and respects, despite the fact that at the time period, we know Germans and Jews were not really seeing eye to eye. But of course, since they're children, they work past their prejudices. Because that's the message of the movie. 
prejudice is learned, in case you didn't piece that together. Bruno, not understanding what is going on, is like, uh, Buddy Schmuel, why are you cleaning my house for? This is so weird and silly. You look hungry. Here, have some of this delicious cake. Schmuel's, of course, ecstatic because not only is this probably the only solid food that he has had in a long time, but it's also a dessert food, so it's naturally sweeter. Right as Bruno does this, an SS trooper comes in and is yelling at Schmuel like, where did you get this food? Schmuel, of course, says, Bruno gave it to me. And when the SS soldier asks Bruno, is this true? He says, no, Schmuel is lying. And the SS guy says, finish your chores and then come with me. Now, on a first glance, you might say, okay, that may be bad from our perspective, but Bruno doesn't see it that way. You see, he is raised to be alongside the SS soldiers, so he probably sees him as a trusted authority figure. He doesn't understand the broader ramifications that he could have possibly given his buddy Schmuel. That is literally the biggest load of Stussim I've heard, because literally in the scene right before this, the SS soldier that Bruno turned Schmuel into beat Pavel to death. Okay, well Bruno doesn't know that he's dead, but he definitely did see the beating. Bruno knew full well that that is what could have happened to Schmuel, and he still turned him in. And yet we're supposed to still be like, oh, Bruno and Schmuel, they have this great friendship that breaks the bonds of the, their individual prejudices. I think that message of the movie is also a little bit of shtusim because, like, I mean, okay, like, one of them is prejudice against Jews because, you know, big anti-Semitism propaganda. The other one is prejudice against Nazis because they're murdering millions of Jews. Call it a hunch, but I think the latter group of people has a little bit of a right to be prejudiced against uh, fascists wanting to commit genocide, you know, you know, j j just a little bit. And one thing that I sort of like, even I kind of understood at the time that now, thankfully, a lot more people are bringing attention to this. Well, okay saying more people bringing this to the attention is a little bit misleading because this has always been a thing but the story really seems to be tragic only because of bruno like bruno's death is the tragic part not schmuel's death or the death of pavel or the death of literally anybody else in the gas chamber like the whole point of the story is like oh it's so tragic bruno didn't understand anything and he died it's like I think the story was already pretty tragic. You didn't need to add another element of tragedy in the Holocaust. Like, the story literally ends with Bruno's family sad that he died, and that's sort of like the thing that it ends on. Like, Bruno died, that's sad. Like, this is essentially a Bruno story, and Shmuel and Pavel are essentially like Jewish representation. And again, um, these two are Jewish representation in... One of the biggest tragedies for Jewish people, I think they need like a little bit more than two named characters to represent them in the story. Thankfully, I'm not alone in this. Holocaust historians have like rallied against this film for a while because of blatant historical inaccuracies and just how it frames the story. Now, the way the story is framed, we've already gone over. We spent no time thus far going over some historical inaccuracies, so let's briefly go over some. The two ones that I see the most are revolving around Bruno and Schmuel. Bruno is portrayed as this, like, unknowing child of what's going on within his country. You know, childlike wonder and all this jazz. You know, to, again, drive home the point, like, he was taught to be prejudiced, but his childlike wonder doesn't see anti-Semitism. Which would make sense if he were, like, in a normal circumstance. But he grew up during the Third Reich, where being a member of the Hitler Youth was a mandatory, and anti-Semitic propaganda would have been, like, extremely drilled into his head. We see glimpses of it, mostly through his sister, who was seen to be taking, like, a lot more of the, like, anti-Semitism Hitler Youth training into her head, but I personally don't think it works because she's the older sister and he's, like, the younger sibling. Wouldn't it make more sense if the younger sibling was, like, more willing to accept this propaganda and the older sibling was more, like, skeptical of this since she had more time to grow up in, like, a pre-Reich Germany? 
What I'm trying to say is that Bruno would have been very aware of what was going on during the time period. Now, he of course wouldn't have known, like, everything. Like, you know, I grew up during the Iraq war time period and I quote-unquote knew what was going on, but I didn't, like, know what was going on. And you could have played into that for, like, him, but, but of course with a vastly different, you know, thing considering he would have been a Hitler youth. But I guess that wouldn't have looked good on the poster. And another one is a very sad truth that you gotta learn. Shmuel would have more than likely have been killed as soon as he arrived at the concentration camp, as children were just not useful for forced labor. Now, hypothetically, Shmuel could have survived, as not every single concentration camp killed children upon arrival, much like how some concentration camps killed women upon arrival, whereas others didn't. But broadly, it would not have been likely. Now, in response to all of this, I know what some of you people who defend the book will say. It is historical fiction, and it doesn't claim to be non-fiction. And that will probably be used as a way to deflect criticism because it's a fake, it's supposed to be fake, it's not real, it's a story. Yeah, um, tell it to a lot of countries' education systems because for some reason, this movie has made its way into school curriculums. Now, that would be bad enough, but what's also bad is that it seems that this seems to be like the entirety of a lot of schools holocaust education and since the education system thrives on not educating children and instead of making them suicidal students will basically walk out thinking i learned everything i need to know about the holocaust from this especially when this is the only part of the education of this particular subject that is mandatory you want to learn a little extra well, that's gonna be an elective course it's even gotten to the point where a study in 2015 concluded that not only did a majority of students think that this was based on a true story, and also they interacted more with this than Anne Frank's diary. Hmm. First-hand account from someone who is there and tragically lost their life and is one of the most famous accounts of the Holocaust. Or fake movie. Hmm. Sorry, the overwork underpaid people have like five more classes of this to teach. This book is just too big, I guess. And surprisingly, that same poll concluded that these children were walking out with extremely skewed perspectives on the Holocaust, like believing that the Jews were tricked into voluntarily entering concentration camps rather than being forced into concentration camps. Because there's one film where they show a propaganda film of a concentration camp and they don't make note of the fact that they're going to show this to the German people and not the Jewish people. Believing that the vast majority of Germans didn't know that the Holocaust was going on because Bruno didn't. Ignoring that in the movie, the parents know very well what is going on. But the one that'll give you the most absolute worst interpretation of our education system is the fact that they believed that the Nazis stopped the Holocaust of their own volition because a Nazi child was killed in a camp. Due to how we taught the Holocaust through a crappy movie, people walked away thinking that the Nazis had a magic change of heart of the Holocaust. The biggest problem is, none of this will change probably. I'm just another voice added to the pile. Despite these criticisms ranging from basically the book's publication, the dude literally even wrote a sequel to it. Look, I don't even care that the plot of it actually sounds kind of interesting. You don't just make a sequel about anything involving the Holocaust. Especially when yours is literally one of the worst things that interpreted the Holocaust outside of, like, literal Nazi propaganda films about the Holocaust. Now let's try to end this on a positive note. Rather than spending our time, you know, railing against this movie, even though it very much deserves it, let's try to instead channel it into more positive outcomes, like recommending better movies that could better teach people about the Holocaust. My personal recommendation is A Film Unfinished. It's a film that goes into the story of a well-known lost propaganda film that the Nazis tried to make about the Warsaw Ghetto after the film was discovered in a warehouse. And while I haven't seen any of them, I've heard that these ones are also relatively good and I definitely will be checking them out at one point. So yeah, if you haven't pieced it together by this point, 
I am not a fan of the boy in striped pajamas. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and click the bell to be notified if a future video of mine comes out. And if you need some more content from me, you can go to my website, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, or consider supporting me on Patreon. Yeah, if you haven't pieced it together by this point, I am not a fan of the boy in striped pajamas. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment. Well, well, well. Look who has been rebitten by the reviewer bike.